Well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's quick conversation for the farm program where we will be discussing implementing safety protocols on your farm. Um, I'm excited to have both Colin and Stephen joining us today and to give a quick introduction to each of, the, each of them. Uh, Colin is currently serving as an HR manager with the AA Dairy LLC for the past five years, and he thrives on training new hires, managers, and tenured employees about best management practices for safety within that, the dairy. He was born and raised in Arizona, but has called, has called Idaho home for over 20 years and is happily married with three wonderful children. Before making the transition into the dairy industry, Colin was a high school Spanish teacher, principal, vice principal, athletic director, and wrestling coach. He has a passion for cows, speaking Spanish, improving, and enjoying the journey. Also joining us today is Stephen Hallahan, who's been a dairy-focused consultant with Cargill since the fall of 2008. As a nutritionist, Steve works with about 60 dairies in the Northeast. Safety is also an important part of, the, of Steve's job with Cargill as he serves as the safety lead for three years and always makes safety a part of his visits with his customers. Safety on dairy farms is personal to Steve as well as his wife and their two young boys are active on their family's 350 cow dairy in central Pennsylvania. So before I get started with questions for these folks, as a reminder, these quick conversations are recorded and posted afterwards on our farm website as well as additional resources pertaining to the subject matter. Um, the goal of these is really just to be quick snippets uh, for the dairy farmers uh, to ask questions and interact with some subject matter experts around initiatives that are important to the farm program. So I'd really encourage you today as we have a short amount of time with these two, folk, two, these two gentlemen today that you may submit some questions that you may have. Um, if you're watching over on the Zoom side, feel free to submit those uh, from the chat feature or the Q&A feature. You can find those if you hover over the bottom of your screen. And if you're watching over on Facebook, you can just type a comment into the comment box. And um, before we wrap up today, we'll be able to hopefully uh, plug in a few of those questions as well. So to, catch, uh, to kick us off, uh, we'll go ahead and start with Steve because we're also excited to share uh, something else today which is a program initiative that we are doing jointly with Cargill. So Steve, can you kick us off a little bit by just sharing why safety is so important to Cargill? Thanks, Beverly, and uh, thanks for having me. Thanks for the introduction. Hopefully you guys can all hear me okay. Um, as Beverly mentioned, I've been working with Cargill as a dairy-focused consultant on farms uh, for the past 13 years. Uh, really enjoying my time with Cargill, working with about 60 farmers. From day one, it was uh, well known to me and my coworkers that Cargill's number one top priority is, is safety. And that means that they put it uh, before anything else, before uh, business, before profits, before logistics, before anything else, safety is, is priority. And they don't just talk about it, they actually live it. Prior to COVID, when we got together as a group uh, to start any type of a meeting, it always started with a safety message, whether that be something that occurred on a farm or a hazard that sparked up, it always started with a message. And I try to bring that same mentality and same philosophy to the dairies that I work with. Um, I try to talk with people about safety, how they can act, how they can work safer. I try to do what I can so that they can visibly see me uh, doing those things as well. When I'm on a dairy, if I'm in a high visibility area uh, near a manure pit, or going to pull forward samples at a trench, I always wanna make sure that I have my safety vest on and my safety cap on as well, so that I stay visible. When I'm walking cows, uh, walking pens, looking at animals, I always try to make sure there's someone else is close, that if anything does happen, someone's right there to help me out in a, in a situation. Uh, we are never to walk uh, pens with bulls in there is another safety uh, priority that we always take. Um, several years ago, a consultant was injured at a farm while drilling a, a bale of hay. Cargill implemented a safety protocol saying that we must wear gloves when we use our hay gore to pull a sample of, of, of hay or a baleage on a farm. So those are just some of the things that, that we try to bring to farms. Um, personally, I have two young boys. I have a four-year-old and, and a two and a half-year-old, and they love the dairy farm. They love going out with my wife and I to the, to the farm. They love spending time with cows. We have our own safety protocols that we try to live by when the kids are outside, especially when it comes to operating equipment uh, and making sure we're doing everything we can to keep ourselves safe, but also to keep the children safe as a priority, so. 
Thanks, Steve. And you know, a lot of the things that you spoke about are, are things that, that fall nicely into some of the initiatives and priorities that we've outlined in the Farm Workforce Development Program area that was introduced last year. And, and um, we'll, be, we'll be seeing on more farms this year participating in the farm program. And so, you know, we, we reached out and had some conversations with you guys. So can you share a little bit and introduce to this group uh, what this initiative, this joint initiative that we're pursuing is? Sure, you bet. Uh, Cargill's Live Safety Program is inviting dairy farmers to live dairy safety through action, not just talk. So Cargill understands that every dairy farm is unique. Uh, from the number of cows that a farm works with to the employees on a farm, to the different equipment and technology that they use, like robotic dairying, milking parlors, staunch and barns, so on and so forth. So to that point, we believe that safety protocols and training must be unique for every dairy farm too, which is why we are launching our actionable safety review tool at cargilldairydreams.com backslash live safety, starting on April 1st. This online tool helps dairy farmers think through various safety topics like first aid kits, high visibility clothing, which I mentioned before with the vests and the caps, fire extinguishers on equipment that are, that are heavily used, and whether some signs are needed, such as uh, uh, dangerous, dangerous manure pit, stay away, stay away from animals, that type of thing. So it allows them to record responses detailed to their own specific operations while also giving additional advice and links to specific on-farm safety. Thanks. And, you know, dairy farmers already have a lot to on their to-do list, a lot on their day-to-day -day operations to manage and handle. What, what do you think is the value for farmers to participate in this specific initiative? The ultimate value for the dairymen is that everyone returns home safely to their loved ones, whether that be the dairymen, their employees, their children. That's the ultimate goal. So upon completing the actionable safety review, Farmers can download and print the list of their farm specific actionable safety areas to use to start their own safety plan and better implement the safety protocols they see most beneficial for their dairies. As a thank you for the dairymen and the farmers for their time and commitment to working safely, Cargo will also be sending out two high visibility reflective safety ball caps to dairy farmers who utilize the online tool in the month of April and while the supplies of the caps last. Thanks. Uh, and you know, we talked a little bit fast there. So can you uh, remind folks of maybe where to go to participate or find out more information about this initiative? Sure, Beverly. Yep. It doesn't start until April 1st, but on April 1, dairy farmers will be able to access this tool on our Cargill Dairy Dreams website. The specific URL for that site is cargilldairydreams.com backslash live safety. Dairy farmers can also find resources and dairy safety tips and stories on the safety tab of the Cargill Dairy Dreams website as well. So I'm just running through it real quick, Beverly. I've taken a look at it. At the very top, you'll notice some, some quotes of some actual testimonials, brief ones, of some of the thoughts that the dairy farmers and, and farmers in general have shared on why safety is important. And then you can scroll down there's a bunch of questions. You fill out your responses. You make your action plan. If you keep working your way down the sheet, you'll fill out some personal information, business name, contact address, and then you can submit that form. When you submit the form, you will then get an email and it will tell you the safety plan that you just came up with. So you can print that off and you can use that at your next meeting to implement the new procedures with your employees and with your family. Cargill also gets a copy of that email as well. And that's how we no are notified where to send the caps to uh, for the farmers. Yeah, and we're also, first of all, we're very thankful for Cargill for this partnership and, and really prioritizing safety on the farm. Uh, aside from the workforce development program area, or if you're having preparing for an evaluation, if your co-op or processor has elected to participate in this program area as well. Um, and, and a part of this partnership, we've definitely shared out some of our resources with Cargill that are pertinent to this area um, that their field staff have been armed up with and can provide those to dairy farmers as well. Um, but in, we too will be sharing out um, around the first, we'll be sharing out the web link and, and more information pertaining to this. If you have questions or, or concerns related to that, definitely reach out to your farm evaluator and ask them questions for assistance if you're looking for that, as we'll communicate that information with them as well. So Colin, turning to you, you know, you have a different perspective 
uh, being in a different role um, within the dairy industry. So can you speak a little bit to the prioritization of safety, you know, at AA Dairy for you personally, why is that important in this space? Yeah, thanks. <clears throat> um, so I just share the word mejor, uh, Spanish word for better. Um, we pride ourselves in animal welfare and we care for our employees and we want them to have a better life. And I know that's why they work for us is they, they're looking for a better life. And oftentimes due to injuries, um, our employees leave with a life that isn't necessarily better. And it could maybe uh, not necessarily our employees, but employees in general in, a, in, a, in an environment where there's not very good safety may leave with a life that's not like they wanted a better life. And so we wanna help them have that better life and uh, being safe uh, means that um, it's better for the cows, better for the company. And we find that through safety, we can save money through our workers' compensation. Um, and we just want, want to have that focus where, where things can be better. Um, so me personally, I was hired on as an HR manager five years ago with AA Dairy, mostly to focus on retention and, um, and improve, uh, you know, employee recruitment and just the value of employees. And really, um, I feel that we've done a great job of that. And we've got a, ourselves in a good position with how we're retaining employees and, and filling open positions and not having open positions. Um, you know, right now we're full, yay. Um, so, but as I was working and, uh, you know, I wasn't brought on to do safety, but I, I moved towards it because I noticed uh, with working with managers and trainings and protocols and all the things we do, um, I noticed there was a need there that there are many injuries that were happening that, that needed to be avoided. And so, you know, I, about three, three years ago, started making a push of, hey, I need to be involved in this and we need to do a better job. And here's what I'm seeing, because I was tracking the workers' compensation side of it. Um, and so uh, we, we weren't horrible. I mean, we, but we weren't, we were, you know, about average. And, and I'd say now we're a little better than average, at least, or maybe more. But, um, but we focused in a lot on, uh, you know, what happens when an employee, you know, why, why was an employee, what's the root cause? Uh, what's going on, why did that happen? And analyzing it with managers and not just, oh, accidents are gonna happen, it's a dairy, you're working around cows, you can't control cows. And some of that philosophy needs to be talked about where you know you can um, protect yourself and you be in the right place and, and do the right thing so that we avoid injuries. Locally, uh, constantly and across the nation, you see a lot of press about uh, major incidents that happen that, that you know there are deaths, there's things that you know, are, are things you want to avoid and don't want to ever happen. And really close by here, two years ago, there was a, you know, a feeder that ran over a, a cow, cow a manager, a cow pusher, right? And, um, and that was a former employee of our company that used to work for us. And it hit home like that could happen to us. And, uh, and luckily, those things happen to remind you that what are you doing? Are you doing the right things? And, and so um, it's, it's important to us because our employees are important to us and because it's, it's important for the business to, to be successful, to, to be focused on safety. Uh, I'd love to say it's number one priority, um, but I don't know that, that we have that, we, we value safety for our employees is what we put on our, uh, we, we, we uh, have a sign that I, I update every day. When was the last time we had a lost time accident? And every day, you know, I go to that sign, I put the number up, it's right there by the parking lot where most of our company, our employees come and they know um, how many we've had this year that could have been, uh, lost time and, and major uh, incidents and right on that we put we value safety that's that's the top for us and, and we do we value it we don't want to uh, we want to be direct with our employees and want them to know we value you and we value your safety we want you to have a better life and by being safe you're going to have that better life you're going to come here you're going to have a job that's going to help you be satisfied you're going to do a great job and help the company and yourself you're going to take that salary and you're going to go home and contribute it to your family and you're going to go home safe and secure and healthy and that is a better life other than if you're not and you're leaving because you're you're not being safe or we're not helping you be safe, then you're going to leave maybe um, not with a better life. So, there. Sorry. Thanks, Colin. I think yeah. you really outlined that that people matter and and how we take care of our people matter and why that's important. You know, again, I spoke a little bit about this with Steve about already having a long to-do list and, and things to be worried about and, and maybe adding something else to the to-do list is is a bit overwhelming. I know for us as a farm team, we don't want folks to have to recreate the will. Um, so where can folks go and what resources can they utilize if they want to know where they should start, what protocols they should uh, develop and how to go about developing them? Is that for me? Yes, that's for okay. you. <laughs> well, we work, uh, we work with our managers a lot on this. So we've, we've created uh, protocols 
with our managers, our, our CEO created a lot of protocols for, you know, cow care and, and, and all sorts of safety protocols, but it comes from the top down. We also recently, as we're doing a safety program, focus really in on workers comp. And um, so the, we work with the state insurance fund of Idaho and um, they, a couple of years ago approached me and said, if you guys have a, a very valuable safety program in place, it will be very beneficial for you because we're going to be giving some percent discounts. And that was kind of one of the things we were already wanting to do anyway. The first time they brought it up, I really didn't have time. Like you said, I had a to-do list and I just couldn't get it. And, and I'm not going to just say, here, everybody do this because um, that's not the approach to get buy-in. Um, so a couple of years ago, um, we, we've had time to do it. So we focused in on a management directive plan that came from our owners and they signed a plan that outlined what they expected for safety. And we put it by all the time clocks. They signed it. We provided it to the managers to make sure they knew what the plan was. And we posted, and they're still posted by all of our time clocks where, where our employees can see. And from that top down, we also did a lot of surveys. So we, we relied on our, our employees also for our safety program and protocols uh, in some ways. You see me wearing this vest, not because of anything other than our employees, actually. We did a survey a few years ago when we started this, which was, what do, we, what do you need? What, what do you see as the, the issues that we have? And our equipment operators said, we can't see our employees oftentimes at night or during the day, and, and we need them to be visible. And um, so that we have no major incidents there because that's a huge deal. And, um, and that just came from our employees. And so they suggested, we'd like to see this. It was a hard change. Uh, initially we thought, well, is everybody gonna wanna do it? What's the cost gonna be? Um, are they going to really follow through and do it? And who wears them? Does everybody wear them? Just only these people. We had to go through a lot of things, but it was a suggestion from the surveys we did. We did surveys of every team, and we found out what are the areas that you find to be unsafe for you. Be honest. And we did the surveys in a way that could be anonymous and not worry, like in front of the manager saying something that maybe somebody you know would be uncomfortable saying in front of a manager. So we did we did a good uh, route for getting the right information. And then when we received it, we looked over what can we do and every single team, we decided we're gonna do at least two or three of these and make sure they know we're hearing them and we're responding and we're going to do it. We're gonna be of action and, and we did. And that's one of the things where we said, everybody's wearing vests, everybody. And every time I do a new hire and onboard somebody, here's your vest. Um, when employees have a vest that's ripped, they bring it back to me, trade it in, let's get you a new one. There's no excuses for not having the vest because it's, uh, so you gotta have the vest. And, um, and that's when we instigated that, that, that was a year before we had the major incident nearby here where there was a death of a, of a cow pusher where we got ran over. And we, we also found that we needed uh, backup cameras on our feeder, feeder trucks. And so we put those in, we spent the money on it and we wanted to do it. And um, because we wanted it to be better and we wanted to hear what the, you know, our employees were needing to be safer. And so we went and responded to that. And that's exactly the reason why that, that fatality happened is that they did not see the employee and it was in a backward situation. And, and so we try to be proactive and we feel blessed that, uh, you know, it, it was, it's helped us. And um, so from the employees, from just uh, also with our protocols, I mean, Cal care protocols, we do work with Zoetis um, a lot. Um, and so they, they provide support uh, that, that helps us when we do trainings. I know you're going to get to that training on protocols. I'm talking about developing, but anyway, um, yeah, so it, it needs to come from, with buy-in from the employees. So that's why we went to the managers, talked to them. Actually, I, I forgot about this part. We talked to the managers first. Hey, what questions are, are you comfortable with us asking? And we made sure then we asked those questions. And we came with those questions um, together as managers. And then we took those to the employees. And then we took the information from the employees to establish better protocols. And then also I've pulled in the safety program from the workers' comp, which is best practices that they've said if we do that. And it saved us a lot of money. Just uh, it saved us fifty-seven thousand dollars this year on our workers' comp uh, insurance because we had a safety program in place as a company, and they said, "Here you go. Here's fifteen percent. Um, you guys have been doing a great job. We do documented trainings, so we're constantly communicating and discussing it um, with with our uh, employees and managers and as a team." Yeah, and actually, you mentioned Zoetis's resources and, and Merck's resources, and it actually made me think about, um, you know, just a reminder that we do have resources on our website as well. I'm kind of trying to gather some other in, internal industry resources and things that are developed, again, goes back to not having folks recreate the will, if folks are looking to find some information on that as well. So, you know, also, starting in the animal care side and moving over to the workforce side, we, we put a lot of priority on that written protocol, having that in place, but 
in my opinion, the importance is making sure that there's the action there, that what's actually going on in the dairy um, is, is where the, the main priority is there. So how, you know, whether it's new employees or just annual training or regular reminders, how do you go about managing training and implementing what those protocols are? Um, so uh, we take time uh, with all onboarding, I think is an important part of the training with every new hire. And then we, um, I create, here's my, here's my uh, documented training schedule. So we initially it was, Hey, make sure you train on this, do it, you know, every couple months and, um, and turn it in. And um, so the encouragement of the managers to train is there and we were doing it and they are. Um, but I think the documented part of it is what the, the um, brings a little bit more accountability into play and gets you to talk about more of what you're doing. And so we take the time at the end of a shift or in the middle of a shift, or oftentimes it's just a few minutes, or sometimes it's bringing in Zoetis with somebody to train the whole team. Um, maybe it's a manager training. Maybe it's one that we do in the office. We have training videos um, that we, we utilize, we, we had made. So we have some for each type of position and especially every, every new hire um, goes through our cow, cow care uh, video. It's a five minute video about how to move cows and appropriately. And, um, they sign off that they're going to commit to some good care of our, our animals and we review those each year we want them each year to go through those and so it's uh hr managers direct supervisors it's outside trainers that we utilize um it's making sure we take the time and then the documented part of it is kind of like outside uh, it's not necessarily <laughs> it's not easy but uh you know hey here's the agenda here's what you can talk about and have everybody initial that they were there at that meeting and then turn that in and um that's what state insurance fund wanted from us. And I keep providing to them as we do the trainings. And it also helps remind our uh, supervisors to, to do them. And if they have need help, I just type it up for them. Here's, here's the agenda. Um, you know, if they're doing a, a meeting I can attend and I can help you get that training, make sure it's done. So, um, so I guess uh, in small groups right now with COVID oftentimes it's, you know, you don't want to be 50, but I guess you can be, you know, uh, we, we have done less bigger meetings than we used to, um, but it's still possible. And, um, you know, we meet outside um, and it's fine, it's fine. So um, just taking the time and valuing that is, is an important shift if you don't do that, you know, and having managers really want to do it and, and be excited about it and employees understanding that it's important. Yeah, I think that, um whether it's COVID related or adaptations, flexibility was the key in 2020 and still tends to be the key in 2021 and is often can be implemented in the workforce management as well. Um, the last question I have before we open up to the questions that we receive from the audience is, you know, how, how do you promote safety culture on the farm? If maybe someone's not willing and able or the most excited about uh, implementing protocols, why, how do you portray that it's an importance to your employees? Um, consistency and persistency, I guess being persistent and being consistent, right. Um, is going to, uh, maybe somebody doesn't change overnight and, you know, maybe, uh, you know, so, so like I said earlier, it was from the top down. They know that that's, you know, we're wearing, that's why I have my vest on because I'm out there making sure, uh, we're doing this and, and, and I wear, and everybody does it and our owners wear them and, and every manager does. And so everybody's doing that and that creates the culture. Hey, we, we, we care about it. And, and, um, you know, when we're, how do we improve our safety culture on the farm? We, we talk about it and we, we don't ignore it and we don't make excuses. We, we look for answers. Um, we're consistent. We, I, I send out weekly reviews about, hey, here's how we're sitting with our safety. Here's some things that are happening um, or happened last month or um, recently have happened or, or uh, here's some things at this time of year we need to make sure we're watching out for. Um, I do monthly notes on it and just kind of give updating on here's what we're doing as a company and I remind managers to be, to be aware of what they're doing as a team and as far as, um, you know, what incidents are occurring with, with uh, injuries. And so we, we talk about it and then we implement it. Um, you know, one of the goals would be to, to have them reporting near, near misses. So like almost, you, you almost got hurt. And, and that's one of our goals is to get better at doing that and, and reporting it and being comfortable I think part of the culture is also, um, you know, sometimes people try to hide things or, or, or just are afraid to talk about it. Like, I don't, I don't bring that up. So but we're going to talk about it and we're not going to ignore it. And, and um, 
we have lots of, we have, <laughs> I don't have to tell all of our numbers, but we have incidents oftentimes that are just incidents and reported. And hey, I, I smashed, I got my finger bent back, but they never miss work, but they have it. Nothing really happened, but they're getting reported because we want to know what's happening. And so if those are getting reported, we definitely know everything's getting reported and talked about. And, and when you have those near, you know, those minor incidents or those near misses and you can discuss it and like, okay, that was a close one. Uh, what are we going to fix so we don't have a big one? Um, and, uh, you know, knowing managers are, are willing to, to analyze that and self-reflect and not be afraid of that. And it's got to be a culture of trust that, you know, you can talk and report. And, and then also it, it makes it a little bit more difficult because you have to really respond, right? Okay, are we willing to uh, put the money into fixing this problem or not? Uh, and because this is the bigger issue. And so, um, you know, it causes you to be accountable as a company when, when you have these discussions and know, okay, well, here's what we can do and we're gonna do it. Um, so it just, just takes time and consistency and, and, um, and uh, good people, good managers that, that wanna be a part of it. And if it's too much for those that won't, don't wanna focus on it, then they're not gonna be a part of it. They're gonna find a way to find something different and that's okay um, if that's part of your culture. You don't, you don't want people that don't wanna buy in. So um, that's the hard part to do, but um, that's what you, you have to do in the long run. Okay, sorry, <laughs> too long. Oh, no, I, I greatly appreciate the attention to detail. And I think the more information is the better. Uh, I think that we do have question, uh, time for about one question. I know we're pushing up on time. So I would be interested to hear from both of you, um, the, your perspective on, you know, someone is starting from scratch. What is the low hanging fruit? What is the easiest thing to implement? What's that first step in implementing safety protocols? So Colin, I don't know if you want to take that one first. Since you're off mute, I'll volunteer you first. <laughs> so what's the low hanging fruit? Um, I don't know, that's a tough, I don't know where, where I would start. Um, so, I guess, um, are you having meetings? You know, maybe maybe the low hanging fruit is, do you talk about it? Like, start there. Do you, do you even bring it up uh, as managers? Do you do you you know discuss how do you, how can you be safer here? Hey, we need to be safe by doing this, this, and this, and going over. Take five minutes. You know, uh, recently we had a uh, Idaho Dairymen Association provide us with these huge posters with tailgate talks and. You know, are, are those happening? Is that so? Then, as you talk about it, and employees start hearing, "Wow, they're you know, we're talking about these things," and then they're going to start bringing them up. And um, so that may be a good place to start. Is just for your managers to make sure they're discussing it and talking about it often. How often are you doing it? Um, so, uh, where else could you start? Just find the find the major. I mean, for me, I, I looked at it through workers' comp's eyes, right? So here are the major incidents we've had over the last five years. <laughs> And, and here's all the injuries we were looking at. And, and I actually got some great reports that were provided by our state insurance fund, which analyzed really well, which you can get. Um, here's where the high, high frequency injuries are. And here's the high cost injuries that you have. And um, <clears throat> what, bringing that up, here's, here's what we are as a company. Let's look at this. What, where, where can we address this? Um, I know oftentimes we talked about the uh, getting something in your eye. It wasn't a major cost, but it was a major high frequency. So we, we did implement, you know, where everyone's wearing safety glasses. That was like different, you know, like, hey, wear your safety glasses. Even some still like, oh, they're still fogged up. I can't see when I'm putting the milking machines on or, you know, or it gets manure on it. Okay, but we wear them, you know, you get new ones or you wash them off. And because we don't want you to have, you know, that, that <clears throat> issue that comes up, you know, hey, you got manure in your eye, you're gonna have infection, it's gonna be, you know, burning, and then you're gonna have two days of a swollen eye if you don't take care of it right away. And you know, it's it's a simple thing, but it's something that's, you know, out, out, <clears throat> it's hard to enforce, but it's whether, whether you're willing to or not. So those are some things we we looked at. Um, but yeah, just and then hearing the for me, if I've already explained. I think your employees, if they provide some of that information, like here's like that's a great great place to start with. What what do your employees think? and have to say about what's going on. Um, you might not be able to solve all problems. Um, employees hopefully will know that, but if you can address some, then you know that you'll get trust and, and um, they'll, they'll appreciate what you're doing, so. 
Thanks for that. Steve, do you have anything that you'd like to add of starting points for folks? I think that Colin made a, a good point when he said consistently talking about it, consistently discussing it. Um, one thing I, I try to do is try to make it relatable. Uh, I've profit team meetings either monthly or quarterly on some of my larger dairies, maybe a dozen of them. And we always start the profit team meeting with just a three or five minute discussion about a safety topic, whether it be a tragedy that happened recently in the area, whether it be a tragedy that happened on the news, whether it be something that someone did to make a situation better, but try to make it relatable, right? You're not going to give an employee a safety vest for uh, a child if he doesn't have any children. Try to, try to link it to what job that individual has on that specific dairy on that specific farm and and you know give a give something away to them give, give the guy that runs the um uh tmr mixer give him a fire extinguisher for his tractor give the guy that is walking cows a safety vest just something relatable i think if you give them a piece of merchandise if you give them something that'll just kind of connect it to their lives and but like colin said the more you talk about it the more you discuss it uh the more you'll hammer it home Thanks. Good point. So thank you both uh, for joining us this morning or this afternoon, depending on what part of the country you're in. Um, appreciate your insights and spending a little bit of time with us. One thing that I just want to add that I know we talked about a little bit before. So we as a farm team try our best to develop some resources. Nicole has worked um, really hard uh, to put together some protocol outlines and, and template pro uh, for protocols that you can have as a starting point in addition to the other resources that both Steve and Colin shared with us. So you can find that information at nationaldairyfarm.com. Also, if you have questions or are looking for additional places to start, once you do that actionable safety review um, and, and get help either from that Cargill field staff, or if you wanna reach out to your farm evaluator and ask them for some direction or, or just curious about what's happening in the farm workforce development program area, please feel free to do that as well. I did wanna share about our next quick conversation. It will be on April 21st at 2 p.m. Eastern and we'll be focusing on net zero for dairy farmers. We'll have um, some dairy farmers join us as well as Nicole Ayash, who leads the environmental stewardship program area for the farm program. So with that, um, last thing I wanna leave you with, as always, if you're looking to reach the farm program, uh, any of the staff members or find out more information, nationaldairyfarm.com. You can send us an email at dairyfarm at nmpf.org. And thank you guys for joining us today. Thanks, Beverly. Thank you. Appreciate it. Been a pleasure. Thanks, guys.